Back in 2016, my first husband and I decided to part ways and I found myself homeless as a result. Now with only my check to rely on, anywhere I chose would be a major step down. And while I searched, I stayed in a budget motel. This was a huge culture shock itself and motivated me to find an apartment as soon as I could. Any free time that I had was spent searching and my determination actually soon paid off. Less than two weeks passed and I found an old efficiency near downtown. There was no application or deposit. I simply paid first and last month's rent and moved in. Considering that I had little more than clothes, this process didn't take long. The location wasn't ideal, but I figured it couldn't be too bad. The area had a low crime rate, or at least that's what the manager said, and even if he was lying, I was too relieved to care. Well, as you can probably guess, I wasn't moved in a week before my car was broken into. Not soon after, the family across from me was robbed while they were out. Crimes such as burglary became common around the complex. About two months went by until it was my turn. I really didn't have much to steal, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd been violated. My sleep was repeatedly interrupted by nightmares of men with guns and face masks, and the lack of rest affected my daily life so much that I almost had several car accidents, if you can believe that. After making a giant mistake at work, I was finally forced to admit that something had to be done. Once the unit manager agreed to let me out of my lease, I began searching for a new place immediately. During this period, the burglaries continued, and it became such a common occurrence the police stopped coming out to investigate. Every night I had to remain in that place was a test of my courage and sanity. I was even more motivated than before to find a new apartment, but when I did, I was almost declined because of the price. In the end, I realized that I had to pay more if I wanted security and took it. My new complex was more like what I'd grown up in. There was a gate with a code and everyone was friendly, and I felt so much better after moving in. I must have slept like 13 hours the first night. Things were going so well, I was afraid something bad was going to happen and that would mess it all up. But nothing did though, and I was finally able to get settled in. I was moved in maybe a month when I met my first neighbor. She and I began talking at the mailboxes, and before I knew it, I had been invited to a BBQ. And in spite of some lingering feelings of fear that I picked up at the last place, I took a chance and accepted the offer. And I'm glad I did. This would be the event at which I met my current husband, Brad. He told me later that he thought I was a snob because I didn't speak to him, but he understood after I shared what I had experienced in my previous apartment. It ended well, so I don't hold it against him. And truthfully, I probably was a bit of a smarty pants back then. My opinion of myself was still inflated from the way I was raised. And this story isn't about my love life, though. Instead, I'd rather tell you about a man that we'll call the man without a name. I saw him almost every day for a month, and I'm sure I wasn't the only one. I checked my mail every day after work and would see him doing the same thing, or so I thought at the time. My curiosity soon got the best of me, though, and I tried to strike up a conversation. He was always just too fast. After talking to a few of my neighbors, I discovered that they had similar situations. Other than one woman's young son, nobody had ever exchanged a single word with him. Nobody even knew his name. The boy asked what the strange guy just changed the subject and then rushed off to his apartment, seemingly. The location of his apartment was about all we knew. The people that lived around him said that they rarely saw or heard him, and he really was an enigma to everyone in the complex, and any shred of information that became available spread like wildfire from resident to resident. One lady was so desperate that she threw herself at him only to be rejected. The entire saga took on a whole new angle when the man without a name disappeared all of a sudden. All sorts of theories and ideas were proposed, but none could actually be proven, obviously. We'd almost forgotten about him when the truth came out, and it was far crazier than any of us expected. A month had gone by and I was coming back from the mailbox when one of my neighbors stopped me and told me that the man had been arrested. I asked her why and she wouldn't tell me. All she would say was to check the paper. I returned to my apartment and pulled out the local newspaper up on my computer, and you'll never guess what had happened according to the article. 
The police got a call from our complex that a then unidentified man had been squatting in one of our abandoned units. The squatter was taken into custody with no resistance. When the officers searched the unit, over $5,000 in stolen items were discovered inside. The items ranged from cell phones to laptops. More of the story was being released in the coming weeks. Under the terms of a plea bargain agreement, the man admitted burglarizing nearly a hundred apartments and homes across the city. One of the apartment complex he admitted to targeting was the place that I had fled from a few months prior, and my mind was blown. The odds had to have been astronomical. It appears as if the only place that he hadn't robbed had been the complex that he was actually squatting at. I can only guess that he thought it would bring too much attention to him, and little did he know, his attempt at lying low was what made him stand out. The only thing I ever heard was how he was able to stay in the unit so long without being noticed. I have a few theories, but it's not important enough to include them here. And to this day, that remains the single most creepy and astounding time of my life. If you enjoyed this scary story, listen to thousands more, either over on the Let's Read YouTube channel or podcast.